Hello everyone, it's me, Chef James McKennis, and I am back again doing another reaction video. It's that time of the week again. We're going to go back-to-back -back videos on Village Cooking Channel because the last one was my best reaction video I've ever done. I cannot believe it. It's gotten right now over 2,000 views, brought me 12 new subscribers, like 80 something thumbs up like the comment sections alive it's actually very very rewarding to see something finally hit so we're going back to the the well that hit with uh, village cooking channel we're gonna do the red snapper fish big fish grill recipe cooking in village fish fry and clay ancient cooking video now why did I pick red snapper this video because coincidentally, I have Red Snapper on special at the restaurant. We are doing it Cajun blackened, so Cajun spice, cast iron pan, getting a crust on it on the outside. It's very flaky on the inside. We're putting some garlic shrimp on it, potatoes and vegetables. Nothing too fancy. Two things before we get started, real quick. One, this is not my first time watching this. I already did this and the audio was messed up, so I'm doing this again but my comments will be the same as they were. Second point, some people pointed out in the comments on my Briani video that I watched from them that I didn't show the end, the true end. I stopped while they were eating it. I didn't show them taking the food to a shelter. And I'll make sure to include that in this video because it is truly heartwarming to see the kindness when it comes to sharing food. <laughs> It is truly inspirational and unique to see how excited and happy they are. I have no clue what any of them are saying, but I do know they're very happy to be saying it. <laughs> The technique they're doing, they're taking their knife and they're rubbing it across the skin of the fish to take the scales off and they're just flying everywhere. This can be messy. If you're doing this at home, maybe you're on your counter with a wall in front of you. Uh, pro tip, put some saran wrap on the wall because you're going to throw scales all over it. You can hold it in the sink kind of a little more awkward though. And you can see when they're taking the snails, the scales off why it's red snapper because you can see all that red color reveal itself even though the flesh itself is white hey i hate to interrupt the video but if you're getting any value out of this could you please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below <laughs> Now these are big fish. If me and my kids were out on a boat and caught something this big, I would be so proud. Around here, what we catch a lot of is pickerel. So they're not, they're like a quarter the size. Um, the other thing, you'll see that they are making an incision along the belly to remove the, the insides, the innards. Uh, when you buy fish commercially, like if I call up a fish vendor and I want fish, um, I got a couple options. Most of the time, the most convenient and cost effective, though, is to just get it already filleted. Um, but you can get it, uh, depending what you're going to do with it, you can get whole fish just like this. Some people will argue that this is more cost effective. Uh, really depends, too, on the skill of your staff, whether they have the ability to break it down in a timely manner or if they're just going to screw around with it all day. Uh, the other thing to point out is that there's different levels of dressing. You can get the fish, probably the, the middle ground would be to get the fish, I think it's called New York dressed, and that is head on, entrails gone. That way you still have the head, because some smaller fish, um, like trout, some small trout, you can put uh, head on, on the plate, it'll fit nice on, on one person's plate. Uh, with the heads the here, if it were me and I had the heads, I would throw the heads into a pot and use them for a fish stock. Yeah. 
All right, so they are washing the fish, and I caught some flack for this on my last video where they were making chicken biryani. They were cutting the chicken, cutting the legs off outside, they threw it in some pots, and they washed it down with turmeric. Now, I was making some references to North American cooking. We buy our chicken pre-butchered from the grocery store, so there is no need to watch it. However, there are certain ethnic backgrounds where they still wash their chicken and they'll put it in pots or uh, colanders in the sink, spray it with water and do like a citrus rub. Now the reason that that's not advisable is because that water sprays salmonella mist all over your kitchen and you're more likely to get sick by secondary contact. Maybe you touch um, the water, the mist gets on a panhandle, you grab the panhandle, you touch your mouth, and now you are spending the next 24 hours on the toilet, because that's what salmonella will do to you. With what they did with the biryani, I guess, so what I've learned through the comment section is that in India, you guys don't kill your chicken until the day you're ready to eat your chicken. So you're really washing out more entrails um, and stuff like that. You're not trying to wash off the raw, as it would be to so to speak. Um, with the fish here, I just watched them take out the entrails. So yeah, they're going to be giving everything a bit of a rinse. Uh, the water also, if there's any bits of scale that are off it, but not really off it, like, you know, you, you might miss one or two, but the water is going to help because they're going to be loose. The water is going to help take them off. Um, the only thing I'm surprised though, considering they did turmeric wash on the chicken is that they're not using any kind of citrus here. Like, I'm surprised that in this water bath, there's not, you know, 10 or 15 lemons and limes, maybe even oranges all uh, sliced up to add some, to add into that. If there's a cultural reason for that, let me know. So they're making their own pastes out of their fresh uh, spices and they have, I mentioned this last time too, like a big uh, stone rolling pin. Um, we used to have a granite rolling pin, really heavy. It really pushes dough out a lot better than, uh, than a lighter wooden one. Although I do prefer the wooden one because you can be more delicate. Uh, but anyways, back to this. You can see that they have like a stone rectangular surface with a matching stone on it. And they're rolling it out. That's going to be a lot more efficient than a mortar and pestle when you're working in these giant batches. Although I wouldn't want to break that out if I was just cooking for one. Hey. <laughs> So it looks like they're making some form of curry paste. Okay, and there came in the lemon and lime juice that I was wondering why the fish isn't washed in. And they're using that as liquid in their curry paste to, you know, actually make it, you know, pasty. Other, instead of just relying on the moisture from, say, like the garlic cloves. Okay, another point of interjection here, and I have no problem with this at all, using bare hands in food. In the U.S. especially, because they have slightly different food safety laws than we do here in Canada. In the U.S., I believe in most most jurisdictions, uh, may vary by county, that you 
a food handler must wear gloves on any ready to eat food. Where this is obviously not ready to eat, they are working in the in the, the pre cooked stage. Um, here in Canada, it's all about hand washing. So you have to wash your hands when you get into work. You have to wash your hands uh, after you're done touching like raw meat. You have to wash your hands after you're done doing your vegetable prep. You have to wash your hands here, there, everywhere. You wash your hands a lot. Uh, gloves are not required for ready to ready to make ready to ready made to eat food in Canada. I can with my freshly washed hands, I can go into a bag of lettuce, put it on a plate with my bare hands. That's 100% acceptable here. What's not acceptable is to have uncovered cuts or burns. So if I have a cut on my finger, I have to put a band-aid on it. The band-aid must be covered by either a finger cot, which would be, the other term is finger condom, or a glove. Or if I've burned maybe some ointment, the glove has to be covering that too. It's a two-way protection because it's going to help protect my wound from further infection. And it's going to stop my Band-Aid, blood, and burn cream from getting into somebody's food. When we wear gloves, we have to wash our hands before we put the gloves on. We have to wash our hands when we take the gloves off. We have to wash our hands if we're just changing gloves. So the proper hand washing too is to be technically correct, you have to sing happy birthday in your head twice. That's how long your hands get washed. So next time you're at a fast food place like Subway, see how long they wash their hands after they take their gloves off, if they do. Because gloves add a false sense of security. <laughs> So that's another very important thing. They're getting the paste smeared on the outside and they're also getting it on the inside. So the flesh is going to be seasoned from two sides. I get I was guessing that what they were doing was wrapping the fish in the leaf for moisture retention and then the tin foil so the leaf doesn't burn. That was my original guess when I watched this the first time. Making the clay for the uh, for the cooking process, and it reminded me of ancient old school traditional winemaking where you throw the grapes in a in a vat and you just stomp on them.
Okay, so they've now encased the tinfoil with clay. And I'm wondering, how did you... How would this be done before tinfoil was invented? Was it be just right on the leaf? Like, would you double leaf it maybe to keep the, the dirt off of the fish? Or did you even care? I would imagine you could get quite aggressive with the fire because you're not going to get any like direct fire on the meat so you shouldn't have the same risk as burning as if the fish were just out there in the open <laughs> The other thing I'm slightly disappointed with is I kind of thought that the mud clay mix on the fish would harden maybe like a ceramic pot. I don't know why I was thinking that. And then, you know, you would have the fish and you take a hammer and crack it or something. I just, I thought it maybe there'd be like a little bit of showmanship involved in this. I didn't think the, uh, the clay would basically just dissolve into like burnt ash and kind of come off of it. Oh, and right there, you can see how flaky that fish is. And you can also see that the skin has some nice char on it. That paste did two things. In some spots it stayed pasty, and in other spots it blackened, giving some really nice char to that skin. <laughs> Okay, and now we're getting back to the communal aspect of this dish where they're eating it at, at the table, the three or four of them. They're all just going in there and sharing it as a as a communal experience. And there it is, uh, the the true ending of these videos where they go to what appears to be an old age home. Uh, the phone number at the bottom of the screen is for a old age trust office. So that is these young guys are out there making massive amounts of food and they're bringing them to what looks like, I guess, a Indian version of a retirement home maybe or an old age home. I'm not sure how that works in India. Here, if you go to a retirement home, you usually have like your own bedroom slash maybe a roommate kind of thing. There's uh, community rooms, uh, game rooms, um, stuff like that. And it's, it's quite expensive. It can be up to four or $5,000 a month to stay at one of those places. Um, so it's really important and it's good to see them giving back to the community. They're having fun doing it. 
Um, I really didn't have anything negative to say about this video. Uh, trust me, I'm not just sucking up. If I see something I don't like, I'm definitely going to point it out, uh, like I did in the Brigani video. Uh, you know, I'm not going to like everything that I watch and react to, and some stuff I'm going to love. And whether the algorithm picks up on either or, so be damned, I'm going to be truthful in my opinions. Anyways, that's it for this week. I hope you guys have yourself a good week, and I'll see you next time.